after months of building, Ukraine has launched its counter-offensive. There has been a lot of secrecy around the attack, in the hope to catch Russia off guard. I discussed this next phase in the war with the Chair of Urban Warfare Studies at the Modern War Institute at West Point and retired US Army officer John Spencer. Why has it taken so long for Ukraine to launch this counter-offensive? Uh, a lot of this attack will rely on mechanized vehicles, which have problems in the mud and really constrains them to kill the zones, really, that are roads. I mean, a lot of it also is waiting for equipment. Uh, to be frank, Ukraine has done amazing things with what little they've been given, whether it's just 30 tanks uh, from you know, M1 Abrams, when there's usually you know 150 in a single brigade, to training the forces on all the new equipment they already have outside of Ukraine, you know, 10,000 plus in the UK alone, in other countries, trying to create the necessary mass, which will which is needed for this attack. Um, to include when I was there in April, seeing the flyers, of uh, uh, basically recruitment drives just specifically for assault brigades designed for this operation. So it takes time, really, as. Ukraine has been building its military as it's fighting a war of survival, you know, increasing from 100,000 last year to 700,000 this year. Plus, really, no, nobody really knows the true number. Um, that's why it's taking so long. And Ukraine really does not do attritional warfare where it will sacrifice tens of thousands of soldiers like Russia does, where it empties its prisons of 40, 50,000 people and sends them all to die in battles like the Battle of Bakhmut. Uh, Ukraine is, is fighting smartly and sometimes it takes time. Early indications suggest Ukraine will take a multi-pronged approach to its next attack, targeting Bakhmut, Donetsk and Zaporizhia. There's a few reasons for where what we're seeing are these initial stays. And, and as, of, as we're talking, really only about 10% of the Ukrainian forces allocated for this assault have been seen on the battlefield. But yeah, areas like uh, Bakhmut, which is, is an assault brigade, uh, which Bakhmut has very little military advantage, but it still holds massive political will of the people um, value, and it is still Ukrainian territory. So, I mean, why the different areas? It's one, you have to give your enemy multiple dilemmas and cause your enemy to not be able to respond to all the problems you're providing them, which is one of the things that's happening here. Uh, two, you have to discover your enemy's weaknesses by engaging them. So there's a little bit of that. We saw earlier a few weeks ago some armed reconnaissance, some deep fires to soften the Russian enemy. But really, now we're starting to see where those penetrations are going um, and, and discovering the weaknesses to try to get a breakthrough. Ukraine doesn't have to attack across hundreds of kilometers of the Russian defensive lines that they've built. They just have to attack along one kilometer at different locations, and, and then they'll surge the main effort through those breakpoints. Ukraine is going to approach uh, this counteroffensive with all means they have available. Uh, but they because they weren't giving, given a lot of air power and have been, been given, honestly, a small amount of capabilities to fight this war. I mean, if this is a Western military, it would be a com joint combined arms attack. Well, Ukraine doesn't have that. It, it has very little of all of it, and the, nobody has achieved air superiority. So that really makes a big difference on how you attack defensive lines. I mean, the evolution of Blitzkrieg and combined arms maneuver combined the airplane, the tank, and the radio to create these uh, breakthroughs and then surge infantry into them. Ukraine can't do that. So it is using the long-range precision munitions they have to hit behind Russian lines, to hit their ammunition supply points, their communications, all of that. But Russia has also learned over the last nine to, months to a year on repositioning, not being so vulnerable to those attacks. But that's the interesting part is you see Ukraine push forward, maybe slower than other people do. Every little bit, every few kilometers, that's extending their range behind the defensive lines with those munitions that they've safeguarded this entire time. What role will Leopard and Abrams tanks play in this next phase? I expect to see some of the Western armor, like the Leopard, the Abrams, uh, the infantry fighting vehicles like the Bradley. We, we've seen one unit out there with them, but that to be, since it's so little, to be really a part of that uh, striking force, that main effort, because of all those Class A tanks that the West has given, 
not enough, but an, they out maneuver, out sight all of that Russia has. So they'll be used uh, as, to really show the world that when Ukraine is given these advanced weapon systems, they can achieve great things like we've seen already with the MLRS, the rockets, uh, the artillery, all of that. Um, but I think you, you, Ukraine is also fighting a strategic battle as in its strength is its alliances. So it needs to show videos of you know, liberating terrain with these Western weapons so that that support continues because that's, that's really the heart of Ukraine's survival is its alliances, is the Western support. According to Russia, it's so far held off the counteroffensive, and Putin even claims the assault is failing. I'd call it um, hopeful, hopeful thinking, I think. Uh, r really, yeah, of course, attackers are going to take uh, casualties. But, I mean, you, Russia was losing a thousand soldiers a day in the Battle of Bakhmut. Y Ukraine will not sacrifice their, their soldiers like that. But there is no bloodless war. Ukraine will take losses. And a lot of that because of the lack of things like F-16s and attack guns and all the things that are a part of the recipe of combined arms maneuver in large-scale combat operations. It doesn't have. But it's not taking significant losses that would not not be expected in Russia, of course, is going to capitalize on anything they can videotape, and that's why they're circulating this one video of Western equipment being destroyed. Uh, it's wishful thinking by Putin, for sure. So Russia could see itself in, in because it's trying to hold more geography than they actually have the military to do, both in resupplying and just presence. Uh, you'll see that they'll be forced to answer the question, do I stay here and die, or do I pull back to something I can defend with what I have? That's what we're going to see. That's called a culmination point when the the other side, the enemy, cannot do its assigned mission. In this case, is to defend the illegally occupied ground they hold. I think we'll see that happen a lot in the near future. What does a successful counteroffensive look like for Ukraine? I think honestly, we've already seen uh, Ukraine successes. Right. So it took you, Russia almost a year to claim one city of Bakhmut and really to rule the rubble. Ukraine's already liberated, geolocated, verified multiple towns and villages. But really to call this offensive a success, it won't end the war, but it, it needs to place Ukraine in a position of great advantage over Russian forces in Ukraine. Um, whether that's on the Sea of Azov, whether that's uh, in the, the Donetsk region, cutting off critical supply routes like the P-66 or the land bridge to out of Crimea to Russian forces, and ultimately, they have to show really a, a great liberation of a lot of territory. Again, this is as much for them to liberate their land as much it is to keep the Western support to ultimately achieve the victory, which happens at a negotiation table, which hopefully is Ukraine accepting Russia's terms to remove forces out of sovereign Ukraine and then discuss kind of the future state of Ukraine as one of the strongest European countries in Europe. Fierce fighting is expected on the front line in the coming days and weeks, but time will tell just how effective this will be for Ukraine's military. Simon Banks, The Sun.